Here's a very nice piece of uh, Cold War history. This is the Bendix Family Radiation Measurement Kit, which is uh, intended for use by civilians in their own uh, home radiation shelters. Bendix uh, built plenty of things, you know, for the government, the uh, the Office of Civil Defense. Just the idea of having your own uh, fallout shelter seems kind of crazy today, but in the early 1960s, you know, it was a very common fear that uh, the big one could drop any day. And they weren't really wrong about that either. There were, you know, a number of uh, close calls where people on uh, both sides had their fingers on the button, so... Luckily it never came down to that, and these things just got, you know, put away in uh, people's closets. So anyway, here's the uh, dosimeter slash rate meter charger, and here's the uh, rate meter. At the end of the tube there is a little lens for viewing uh, this little electrostatic meter which measures the uh, charge stored in the capacitor which takes up a good part of the body of this thing and um, you know ionization from radiation causes the uh, charge in the capacitor to drop which you know causes the needle to move. You can see the uh, contact for the capacitor there, insulated with the glass. It's also clear to allow light through. This thing is fairly easy to look through with your eyes, but uh, I could not get a clear shot of this with my camera when I tried. I mean, I can kind of show you the light going through it, but you can see a little bit of the scale there. It ain't easy. So uh, that's about all I can show you of that. It looks just like this though. That's that's an accurate picture there. And this unit is uh, used for measuring the you know rate of a uh, radiation. Basically, it takes the place of a, a Geiger counter or a, a survey meter at a much lower cost. This thing costs you know 25 bucks. Which is about 250 bucks in today's money, but it's still a lot cheaper than a Geiger counter would be. Now this is the dosimeter, which measures you know total accumulated radiation, as it says on there. There's not too much to use in this guy. It has a much higher uh, you know, maximum scale than um, most dosimeters produced for you know the Civil Defense Authority. It goes up to uh, 600 rads, which is basically no survivors. Probably would have been better for it to you know, have a lower scale, because you know, beyond that point you don't even really care anymore. It doesn't even matter. This guy works the same way. It has a little scale in there that you can read when you hold it up to a light. Now here's the transistorized charger. It runs off of one D cell, which I have already taken the liberty of installing. There's the schematic for this thing. Not much to the circuit. There's just one transistor in there, which drives a, you know, a high frequency transformer there to step up the uh, 1.5 volts to, I think, 150 volts, if I'm remembering right something along that order and you can adjust the voltage with this potentiometer here it's got a nice rubber seal too to keep moisture out this is actually one of the best designed dosimeter chargers uh, they made ones just like this you know for the civil defense authority uh, but Bendix's is probably the easiest to use the other ones are a heck of a lot uh, touchier than this one so if you actually want to buy one of these to actually use, uh, go for a Bendix unit.
you unscrew this little cap here, get to the charging contact. Pressing down it lightly, key is lightly, will cause just the light to come on, but it won't press um, that contact in there far enough to make contact with the capacitor and, and change its reading. You could just use a bright light source, but you may not have one in your shelter or whatever. If you press it down further, you know, it turns on the high voltage transformer there to charge the DOS meter. Now, to set these things up, what you got to do is, uh, you know, basically press it down on the contact firmly, as it, as it says there, and then adjust uh, while still holding it down. Adjust this control to bring the little tiny, you know, whisker in there over to zero. And uh, when you remove the decimeter, or, or especially the rate meter, the needle will will move slightly generally. So it may take several goes to find out how much to like uh, compensate up or down to get it to stay on zero. Uh, the capacitor in this guy is much smaller than in that one, so it's a little bit tricky with this one. But with practice, you can get it in one or two goes. Now these things hold the charge for a long time. Uh, this one was still basically on zero, and this one had drifted up slightly. I re-zeroed them before the video, but uh, in the hopes of being able to show you guys. But you know, just in doing this, I, I messed up the reading. Not that it really matters anyway. I'm not uh, expecting any imminent radiation or anything. I don't have anything strong enough to test these guys out. I only have the check source on one of my uh, my only remaining Geiger counter actually. I used to collect civil defense stuff and I had uh, a couple Geiger counters. I sold the two good working ones right after the whole uh, Fukushima thing. I have one more that I, I uh, should probably fix. It just has a problem with the meter circuit. I think one of the high resistance um, precision resistors is, is uh, bad, but we'll see. Anyway, here's the paperwork that it came with. Here's the uh, inspection sheet. Here's a little quick guide to using this thing. In order to keep this video from getting too long, I'm not going to read this, but I will make it so that you can pause the video and uh, read it if you so choose. Here's the uh, instruction and maintenance manual. I'll go through that guy quick too. Basically it says in more words what that little quick guide tells you to do. Probably the most complicated part is a uh, interpreting the rate meter even that's not so bad the dosimeter is just you know directly read there's no no thinking required Not a lot of maintenance needed for this thing. I didn't have to do a single thing to it other than put a fresh battery in it. There's no electrolytic capacitors or anything else that tends to go bad. And thankfully, the battery was not left, you know, in the uh, the unit. Someone left a battery uh, outside of the unit in the little holder there. And that damaged the uh, manual and the other paper items, but thankfully it didn't damage the unit. Well, thanks for watching.